Brothers and sisters, in the first reading today for Wednesday in the 16th week of Ordinary Time, we continue the saga of the book of Exodus. And we hear today about this mysterious event on the journey of the people of God in the wilderness, um, about the, the quail, the, where the Lord provides them quail, meat to eat, but also bread, manna from heaven. And we know this to be a profound Eucharistic mystery, that the Lord himself will provide for us, the people of God, the, the Catholic Church, the, the Church of God, the bread from heaven, the Lord himself. So he won't only just send manna, but he will give us completely himself in the Eucharist. One of um, my problems we could say, if, if this is okay to say with some of our church language, is not the language itself, but the problem is how people who no longer have the faith in the Eucharist, what they could understand when we talk about the blessed sacrament or, you know, we speak about the Blessed Sacrament, we speak about the host and we speak about the Eucharist. And for those of us who have faith and we know the meaning of these terms, uh, we know that we're not speaking about a thing. We're not speaking about a container. When we talk about the Blessed Sacrament, it could give the impression to some people that, um, that, that, that the Blessed Sacrament is a thing. It's a it. But we know that the Blessed Sacrament is not a it or a thing, but the Blessed Sacrament is a divine person. The Blessed Sacrament is Jesus himself. And so it's a, so these, our church language is absolutely beautiful. But when we're coming into conversation with people who might have a weak faith or maybe misinformed, we should be aware of our language. And so therefore, you know, we should always be careful to say, you know, I love the Blessed Sacrament, my Lord and my God. You know, that, that, or to go out of our ways to, to remind people, remind ourselves that when we come to communion, I'm coming to receive a person. We're coming to receive the divine person, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Lord Jesus himself. And so this is really key, that, the, that we, we, we really understand in our hearts that the Blessed Sacrament is the divine person our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And so the Lord gives us himself completely and utterly. St. Thomas Aquinas he wrote many hymns for, that have been used for the Eucharistic liturgy, like the Adorate Devote, the Pange Lingua, and what we pray or chant and sing at Benediction, which is the Tantum Ergo. And, you know, in his prayer, which is translated in English, O Sacred Banquet, um, there's a line towards the end that says, you have received bread from heaven, providing in itself every pleasure. And you see, the Blessed Sacrament, the Lord Jesus himself, is the source of all our pleasure. We know that in human life, when there's nothing like true human love to, to give us those feelings of intense joy and peace and, and pleasure, it's a pleasure in our heart to have authentic love. And, and, and it's such a sorrow and a pain when we, 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 we can't experience that love in our life. But we know that what is even more true is that when we come to know the Lord God and God becomes somebody real to us, that he's a person to us, that the Lord Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, as the Blessed Sacrament, is a person who waits for us, who longs for us, who listens to us, who speaks to us, then we will start to experience these words of St. Thomas, that the, the Eucharist provides in itself all every pleasure every pleasure and so how do we experience the pleasure of the eucharist the ex pleasure of god's love well it's by entering through the mystery of faith by believing making an act of faith again and again and asking the holy spirit to illuminate our minds that 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 when we're before the tabernacle or when we we witness mass we're witnessing the celebration of the of the appearance of the divine person Jesus Christ in the Mass, that we come to meet him personally. And when we receive communion, it's a personal communion. It's a meeting of persons between the divine person and us. And this is amazing. You know, this is this is the truth of our faith. This is what Jesus has left for us. And so the tabernacle, the Lord himself, is the source of every pleasure. And we have to remember that, that when we come before the tabernacle, there's the Lord there listening to us. He listens to every woe that we have, every sorrow that we have. 
but he's there to delight with us as well in all our joys and our thanksgivings. That the Lord there gazes upon us. Um, that the, the Lord is just truly present there for us. You know, J.R.R. Tolkien, one of the great authors of, of the last century, um, who wrote Lord of the Rings, the Silmarillion, you know, so many books. He had devout understanding, a devout faith in the Eucharist. And he said, you know, the Eucharist, the Lord Jesus waiting for us in the tabernacle is the answer to all our problems. If you're looking for romance, Jesus is there. If you look, want someone to listen to you and no one is listening to you, go to Jesus. He listens to you. If you're looking for joy, then go there and find the source of your joy. So brothers and sisters, we have to pray for a deep, deep faith in the Eucharist. And for us who maybe can't get to Mass right now, Ask the Lord to use this time to build our hunger to receive him that when we meet him again, we won't, it wouldn't be like the last time we left him. May the Lord bless you.